Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today what I thought I would do would be the Tiny Tin Challenge that Nisi over at Dollar Diva 99 started. I would have done this a little bit earlier, but it took a while for me to get these markers. They were not part of Prime. They are called the Mixtio, I guess that's how you pronounce it, set of 12 dual tip alcohol based markers. I paid about 10 bucks for these. There was like a, I think it was a $2 coupon that you could use. So they came out to be, yeah, about $10 or so. And I will leave a link to them down in the description below if you uh, wanted to go ahead and look at them. Um, I thought what I would do with these markers is first we would swatch them out and just kind of see what the colors are like. You can see that there are color numbers and names on these. So we will just go ahead and see what the colors look like. So first you can see, ooh, and the covers are on tight. You have your typical chisel nib and you have your bullet nib. Okay, so first color, maybe we'll use the chisel nib so we can see the color a little bit better. This is called Lemon Yellow. And wow, that is a nice bright color. And I'm not going to write the names or anything down. But this is orange. I guess just your, your typical primary colors. Let me put these on the other side here. This is Az Az Ooh, Azealia Purple. Ooh, bright pink. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using all these colors in the picture, but I will use as many as I can. This is Carmine. Good red. This is Deep Violet. Pretty. Hope this isn't too dark for you. The sun is really shining outside and I am right by the patio door so it was streaming really bad over my desk. So I had to shut the blinds. So I have a couple lights on up here. So I hope that works out okay. This one is can't read it. Cer Cerulean blue or Caribbean. No, Cerulean. Okay, this one is cobalt blue. Let's go up. Oops, let's do the chisel. Mm, pretty blue. Go on to the greens. Vivid green. This one is Viridian. Wrong end. This one, we do have a light and a dark brown, which is kind of nice. This is yellow ochre. This is natural oak. Mm, nice browns in this small set. Get the cap back on. And then last but not least, we have the black. Okay, so those are the colors. Let's see what we can do with these. I thought what I would do, let me get the case out of here, is I would color out of the Creative Haven uh, Mandala Tecolations, I think that's how it's pronounced. Anybody that knows me knows I love my pattern books, my mandalas. Um, typically, I color them with my glitter gel pens. I think I had a few colored out of here. Um, and this book is by 
I think this is one by John Wick, who I just love. Yes, it's John Wick. I just love his books. And he does have a couple out now that are not part of Creative Haven. Usually all his books were from Creative Haven. But now I see he does have a couple out that are not part of Creative Haven. So I thought we would go ahead and color this one in with these markers. And we'll see how far we get today. I'm not sure if I'll get this finished or how long it'll be, but I will zoom in and see where I'm at here. And like I normally do for all my mandalas and my patterns and stuff, I start in the middle. So I hope you can see this okay. Let's see, what should we start with? Let me get my markers over here. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and start with yellow in the middle. And I always color with the bullet tips. I'm not a chisel tip girl. <laughs> Unless it's a very large space. And I need to cover it quickly. Let's see. How about if we go for orange? Like all alcohol markers, these will bleed. They'll feather out and bleed across the lines. And I do have a sheet behind here so it doesn't bleed into the next picture. So how is everybody doing today? I'm doing pretty good. It's gotten much colder here in Wisconsin. We've really been lucking out with having a very mild winter, but that is seeming to switch on us. We're supposed to get, for the first time now, I think we're supposed to hit zero or below. We almost broke our record for going the longest in winter before hitting zero. But I guess we won't be making that record because we are supposed to be hitting below zero. I think it's tomorrow night. So, yeah, we got some cold days coming up. We've lucked out so much. We've been in like the 20s or above, and that's very warm for us here in wintertime. Plus the fact... It's the middle of January now, and we hardly have any snow on the ground, which is, again, very unusual for us. Okay, so I'm still kind of learning how to record for YouTube, so... I apologize if I get out of frame, don't get close enough, you can't see. And I'm still learning how to come up with things to talk about. I am not a huge talker, <laughs> so I guess uh, starting a YouTube channel wasn't a good idea, was it? Uh, let's see. Let's go in the background, maybe with the yellow ochre. I see that these are really bleeding. I guess that's a, they say that's a sign of a juicy marker, huh? Again, I'm going to try to use all the colors on this picture, which is normally not what I do. I usually go for a limited color palette of sometimes three colors, at most four. So I try to pick out, you know, just a few colors that go together. I have my go-tos of some variation of pink and purple, my favorite color combination. 
but I also like orange, yellow, and red, as you can tell. That's what I started with. I see I'm going to have to stay away from the lines a little bit to keep these from bleeding over. There were quite a number of color tubists who have done this tiny tin challenge, and I thought it was, number one, cute name for it. Uh, and I thought, oh, that would be kind of fun. And this is my first color and chat. So you'll have to bear with me <laughs> again. I'm just learning YouTube and kind of what content to put in my videos, trying to come up with some ideas. I've had a few requests to see my ginormous coloring book collection, so I think I may actually do that. <laughs> It is massive, and it will be a number of parts long. A number. Let's see, why don't we go for my favorite color, purple. Yeah, so this is gonna be a mishmash of colors in here, but we'll see how it looks. And Nisi started this challenge because she wanted to show that you don't need expensive supplies. You don't need huge sets of markers or pencils in order to get into coloring. And that's true. You don't. There are a lot of cheap coloring books out there like all these creative haven books are very reasonable and they have awesome paper in them they are not you know amazon create space paper they are they have nice heavy paper in them it's kind of smooth with a little bit of tooth so I would imagine colored pencils would work in these too. Okay. I am now up to, I think, 76 subscribers, and I th thank you all very much for subscribing, for the likes, for the comments. I appreciate it very much. And when I do hit 100 subscribers, I will be doing another giveaway. Just as a reminder, my giveaway for the Sun Life Drawing Book ends at midnight Central Standard Time here in the States. And a winner will be drawn on Friday. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and look back in my list of videos. It would be appropriately called Sun Life Drawing Giveaway. So yeah, we will be giving that book away using random.org and you have to have been subscribed to my channel and I had a question, a question in there that needed to be answered in order to qualify. And it is open to international and here in the states as Sun Life Drawing will be shipping the book out directly so they uh, 
opened it up to international. I am able to make this video today because I am not babysitting my two-year-old granddaughter today. I babysit her, well, it was Monday through Friday, every day. And now the other grandma is watching her on Fridays. So I can make my videos on Friday also. Because it wouldn't be too easy to make a video with a two-year-old around. She, uh, as a two-year-old does, gets into everything. She's really starting to test her independence and what she can get away with with Grandma and what she can't. And yeah, Grandma gives in too much. <laughs> and then I have my 11-year-old grandson, her brother, that comes here after school. And my daughter doesn't come to pick them up. She's not necessarily second shift, but she starts at 10 and typically works till like 7, 7.30. So she doesn't get here to pick up the kids till 7.30, 8 o'clock, which gets to be a long day. I typically have them for, well, Maddie, anyhow, my two-year-old, for about 10 hours every day. So, yeah. I mean, I had the patience for kids when I was younger, but, boy, I think as you get older, you don't have as much patience anymore. <laughs> Grandma gets tired. <laughs> You know, Grandma play, Grandma play, and yeah, Grandma will play, but that Grandma's got to take a break. And she don't like that. And she loves playing with her big brother. She so looks forward to when he gets here from school. She'll say, Jaden later. That's his name. I go, yup, Jaden Hader. So then, yeah. As soon as he gets here, of course, he goes on the iPad and watches some videos. Or I have a Xbox 360 that I bought used for him in the other room. And he'll go on that, too. And I have a kitty playing with the <laughs> patio door blinds. Good night. Yeah, he thinks thinks that's great fun. You're going to make it hard for me to record over there. Let's go in with the pink. So, yeah, my days are kept pretty busy with little Miss Madison. I am on disability, so I am available to babysit. As I said in my last video, I shake because of my meds that I'm on. And every once in a while you may see me go, like that <laughs> again because of meds and it drives me crazy and the meds that I am on like many of you out there that have started coloring is for depression and anxiety I had a big time problem after my divorce 
in 2000 and well I had problems before my divorce but they really came into play after that and I was not doing good at all and I had attempted to take my own life not good And uh, so I got some help for that. Whoops, I forgot one, didn't I? I forgot a purple. Where's my purple? Um, got some help, some counseling. Um, had to meet with a psychiatrist regularly. They tried to get me on the right meds, and anybody that's gone through this knows it takes forever to find the right med, the right dosage, or in my case, the right combination of meds. I'm on quite a number of them. And evidently, it didn't do a good enough job because later that year, I had attempted to take my own life again. So, looking back on it now, I just, I'm like, oh my God, Lisa, so selfish of you, because it was right before Christmas. And uh, so I wasn't with my kids for Christmas. I was hospitalized. I did almost die that time. Um, my uh, sister ran me in and... Yeah, so I was in the hospital for a while, and then I lived at the health care center for quite a while. Met daily with psychiatrists, and after a number of months, I was well enough, I guess, to go home. And with this all happening right before Christmas, my kids had never gotten their Christmas presents. Before I got to go home, I went through a number of sessions of ECT. If nobody knows what that is, that is the shock treatment. And most people, when you hear of shock treatment, you're like, oh my God, that's you know, horrible, that's unreal, but it does prove to be effective. It just wasn't real effective in my case. It worked for a while, and I felt much better, but then it's like it kind of wore off. So while I was still institutionalized, if that's what you want to call it, they tried a second round of ECT with me, and I don't remember much about it because it can affect your short-term and long-term memory. And unfortunately, that is what it did for me. I have big parts of my past that I don't remember. One thing I don't remember that's probably a good thing, I don't remember my divorce at all. <laughs> Although it was a very amicable divorce and me and my ex-husband get along great. We never argued about child placement. My husband, my ex-husband now, never argued for full custody with all the problems I was going through, which he definitely could have, but he didn't. And uh, so, yeah. Because uh, of my memory problems, when uh, my kids eventually did open their Christmas presents that year, 
I was just as excited as them because I did not remember what I gave them. And they still kind of laugh about that <laughs> to this day. <laughs> and one of my kids sometime will bring up something that happened when they were a kid and I'm like, really? I don't remember that. My daughter Heather had one time mentioned about when she broke her arm. I'm like, oh my God, I don't remember that. And she just kind of laughs. Oops, let's go up this way. Oh boy, still learning my camera. Okay, we go up this way and we go over. It just seems backwards when I'm looking at it. And I'm sure that'll get better with each video I do, but yeah, I apologize. So yeah, it was kind of an interesting Christmas that year. Some of my kids were quite young yet. I have four kids, three girls and a boy. And was the boy spoiled? Well, I guess in a little ways he was. <laughs> oh. He is my brainiac. He's a very smart kid. Graduated school with honors and went on to get his four-year degree in finance. And graduated with honors there. He'd always... Uh, tick his friends off and his girlfriend at the time, now she's his wife, because he would not study for tests till the night before and he'd get A's. Or, you know, those big book reports, those big papers they would have to write. And you're supposed to, you know, during the week or weeks, sometimes a month, you're supposed to be writing your outline and doing your research and stuff. And this kid would wait till a day or two before the report is due. And he would do his research. He'd write his paper. And, yep, he'd get an A. <laughs> uh, it's like, how do you do that? I could kind of see the studying the night before because I have done that myself. <laughs> I guess you kind of retain the information, you know, a little bit better with it only being the night before, but I don't know. This is quite shadowy, isn't it? Let me turn this other light on. Does that help at all? Maybe we'll try it with that on. Boy, these are really bleeding out. Outside the lines. So yes, I have four kids and I have, well, four grandchildren and two step-grandchildren. My oldest daughter married a guy that had two boys of his own. So at the time, before my granddaughter was born, I had six grandsons. I'm like, where's the girl? So when my daughter got pregnant, I'm like, you gotta have a girl, you gotta have a girl. And she did. So yeah, I only have one granddaughter. And now Heather found out not too long ago that she's pregnant again. She'll be due next year, right around my birthday in August. And she's undecided if she, uh, because now she's got a boy and a girl, which or what, what she would want. Would she rather have another girl because she's got so many clothes saved? 
Jaden, of course, my grandson, wants her to have a boy. He is so good with Maddie, though. Oh, he adores his little sister. They play together so nice. And, of course, Maddie adores her big brother. So, he'll play with her quite a bit. Especially if he's grounded from electronics. <laughs> Which does periodically happen. It's the one thing that my daughter can control over him that she knows will really bother him. <laughs> so, when he has his electronics privileges taken away. He can't be on the iPad. He can't go on the Xbox. So yeah, poor kid's pretty lost. Especially these days, you know. Kids are on electronics constantly. I mean, how many kids as young as, well, I don't know, young as, gosh, was I off camera that whole while? I'm sorry. I just get coloring and I don't think where I'm at. Um, how many kids as young as, you know, six, seven, have their own phones? I think that's a little ridiculous. Except for in the case of my other grandson, he has to have a phone. He is diabetic. And they have a system, he's got an app on his phone that connects to his Dexcom that's permanently in his arm. And so they have a constant readout of his blood sugar levels. And in order for my daughter to have access to that app, he has to have that on his phone. So... There is a reason, I guess, for some kids, you know, having a phone. But the vast majority of them, no. Okay, what do we want to do now? Let's see. Boy, these are really bleeding. That bothers me. I try to be a very <laughs> accurate, very precise colorist. Let's see. Let's go with this. I think the dark blue would be too dark against the purple. Not doing so good with this color and chat, am I? Keep going off camera. But I guess that's par for the course for my very first one. I gotta keep watching and see where I'm at. How do all of you, that's a question I wanna ask you. Any of you that record with your phone, I record with my iPhone. And how do you guys see what you're recording? <laughs> you know, without having to constantly look up and, and try to see your phone, now I'm recording with the front of my phone. So I can't really see it unless I, because I'm recording directly overhead. And so I, uh, I can't really see what is in frame. And that's why I'm having kind of a, a problem doing this. So if you have any suggestions for me, I'd appreciate it. I don't know if I should maybe, I have this stand that attaches to my desk here and then it holds my phone up above me. And so yeah, it's kind of hard to see in the phone and see where I'm at. Especially when I'm zoomed in more like this, it makes it more difficult yet. So, yeah, if anybody has suggestions, if you know of a setup that I could use that would maybe make it easier, if you know of anything out there 
that would maybe make it easier. Okay. I'd appreciate any help. So yeah, it's getting much, much colder here. And we did for a couple days in a row get some of that crappy freezing drizzle. And the cars would get coated in ice. Thank God the roads didn't get too icy. They had salt on them from before. So, oh boy, there goes my dog. Somebody must be here. I am going to have to pause. Sorry, I don't know if somebody's delivering something or what. I'll be right back. And I am back. Did you miss me? That was a delivery, one thing for me and one thing for my daughter. <laughs> I did get, and I was so excited to receive this, this is a flash drive for my iPhone. And I am hoping to use it to uh, transfer my videos from my phone to my computer and uh, eventually learn how to um, edit my videos in Movie Maker. This is 128 gigs, so I should be able to fit quite a number of videos on here before I would have to delete them and just leave them on my computer. Eventually, I want to transfer them then from my computer. I have a one terabyte external hard drive, and I can transfer them to that then. But It'll be quite a while before I have to worry about that. So so I got that, and my daughter is into, they're called axolotls. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them. Let's uh, zoom me back in a little bit. And what they are, are, well, they're kind of a combination between fish and like a salamander I guess you call it and they are very strange looking but they're they're actually pretty neat and she was a dealer in axolotls a number of years ago and bred them raised them and then sold them and some of them let me tell you can get pretty pricey she just bought and I think that's one that's in this container. She bought one that's called, what was it called? Copper, copper head, copper something. And that baby cost over a hundred bucks. I'm like, oh my God, Heather, are you crazy? Well, she had a copper one. And so she is hoping to breed them and then eventually start making a good profit on these. The only problem is with Heather having off today and not bringing Maddie down, she will not be here to pick them up. And she's gonna have to, she lives up in Tomahawk, which is about an hour away from me. So she drives down here to Wassa for her job every day and then, um, of course, has to drive back home. But, uh, yeah, now uh, she's going to have to make a special trip all the way down here just to pick up them axolotls. So that's not a good thing. They were supposed to be here yesterday, so she was a little perturbed that they didn't show up yesterday because she was here to pick up the kids. And now, like I said, she's going to have to make a special trip all the way down just for those axolotls, fish salamanders. <laughs> That's what I call them, fish salamanders. Because, yeah, right now they're just sitting in a styrofoam box, and they came all the way from Rhode Island, so they have probably been in that container for quite a while. 
a number of days. And, of course, with live fish, that is not a good thing. Okay, so let's go up here. We'll go in with pink. So, yes, that's... Whoa. That is what my doggy was barking about. I have three cats and a dog. So I guess I'm kind of a, another crazy cat lady, like uh, Anne and Michelle. <laughs> and then I have one dog, and she's a yapper. She is a toy Pomeranian Yorkie mix. So yeah, she's pretty small, but yeah, she makes she makes a lot of noise. Where am I at? Oh my gosh, I cannot get used to this. How do you people do this? I got to get used to where my camera is on my phone because I'm looking at my phone and I'm looking in the center of the phone and the camera is actually up here. But yet when I look at it, it's, it's like the opposite. I don't know. I'm having a problem, as you can tell. So I don't think we're going to color this entire picture. It's, it's getting a little long. I'm not exactly sure how long this video is going to be now because I had to stop and get that, those packages from my mail lady. And she is so nice. I am really lucky to have the male lady I have. She's just a sweetie. Any bigger packages, of course, she'll bring, you know, to the door. And then she'll sit and jabber with me for a while and stuff. She just, she's hilarious. They were so busy over the Christmas season. I don't know about you and your part of the country but here we had almost everything from Amazon come through the post office and you know usually most stuff from Amazon at least for me is shipped via UPS if once in a very great great while it would be FedEx but almost everything was UPS well since a little while before Christmas, everything was coming through the mail. And I talked to my mail lady, and she goes, yeah, she goes, and they don't get paid hardly a thing for handling all those Amazon packages. And then, like she said, by the time you pay for their labor to deliver them and stuff, they're not making anything on all those Amazon deliveries. Which is really sad because when you're driving around delivering all these packages in Wisconsin, I can imagine it's not much fun. Especially when you get snow and... Now again, this year we've really been lucky. We... Uh, I have not gotten much snow. It hasn't been too terribly cold. Unlike a year or two ago when we broke records for both snowfall and cold. And to break both records in the same winter. Oh, God. That was awful. That was just awful. And last year we had a huge, huge... It was a relatively okay winter but then we got a huge snowstorm in April oh my god that was awful I felt so sorry for all the birds that were out already we had some trees that were budding out it's like what do these birds eat when we got dumped on with over a foot of snow so everything was buried of course I was like, what are these birds going to do? You know, there's no insects. There's no seed unless they eat, you know, seeds off the trees. But, yeah, the buds, a lot of the buds all froze off. And it was, it was awful. That was 
Very, very cruel of Mother Nature to do that to us. You know, especially by April, when you live in the northern states, you are so looking forward to spring. I think I'm supposed to be a southern gal because I hate winter. I hate being cold. And a lot of it, I'm sure, has to do with the fact that I don't do any winter sports. I don't ski. I don't snowmobile. Snowmobiling around here lately, the past few winters, has really been bad. I kind of feel sorry for those guys. Skiers can still ski because they make a lot of snow up on the mountain we have. We call it Rib Mountain by us. It's maybe 15 minutes away. And, yeah, they they make all their snow up there, of course. And so they've been skiing. Oh, for I think they actually were able to start skiing before Thanksgiving this year, which was kind of unusual, but we started getting colder temps. We were way below normal in November. I believe it was November. Yeah, because they were able to start making snow really early. And so, yeah, the skiers were ecstatic. Not the rest of us, though. So, yeah, I do not enjoy winter. Although for Christmas, it would be really odd for me, anyhow, to not have you know, cooler temperatures and snow on the ground. This year we didn't have much snow on the ground at all. And there have been a number of years where we had what we call brown Christmases. Because, of course, the landscape is all ugly. <laughs> That's another thing I hate about winter. You know, there's nothing green. All you have is bare trees. Some mornings can be very gorgeous though because if we get a frost the night before it just it looks like a christmas card in the morning because all the trees will just be you know every little branch will just be glistening with that frost and yeah that is gorgeous especially if the sun is out and you look across and and especially if you're looking like into a, a field and there's trees back behind it and you see all that frost on the trees it, it like i said it, it looks like a a christmas card so yeah it's it's very pretty and i where i live up on top of a big hill up here in marathon there is a catholic school right diagonal across from me and so there's a big field across from my house. So I have a fantastic view from up here. I can see miles to the north. And what's nice with having that Catholic school field across from me is no houses will be getting built. And I was off camera again. Um, no houses will be getting built cross for me to block my view but what I really like about having that field over there is in winter time I get to watch the kids sledding because there is a a hill going down from uh, the street level down to the field level the grass and so it's a great place to go sledding and yeah so because we haven't had much snow there weren't a lot of kids over there sledding but because we had gotten this freezing drizzle now there is ice over there and oh my gosh a couple days ago I seen a couple kids sledding they went almost all the way out to the middle of that field because they were sliding on that ice with their toboggans, their sleds. 
It was hilarious to watch. They thought it was great. So I get to watch that in the summer, or in the winter, and then in summer, you see all these dads and moms out there with their kids playing softball and kids flying their kites, just all kinds of things. There's a soccer net, so there are people playing soccer, just all kinds of activities over there. So it's kind of fun to watch. Now my street is like Dog Walk Central. And of course my little Bella, my dog, has to go absolutely ballistic every time a dog comes past. She's gotten really bad because now she even barks when people are walking past. Oh, and I shouldn't have done that one. Well, we're going to make these all purple then, I guess. So, yeah, she's she's only like four years old, but wow. It's getting really annoying. Anytime. <laughs> it's so funny because she knows the UPS truck stops here quite often. And so now she's to the point when she, when I don't have a delivery, but yet she sees the truck go past, she barely has to see that truck and she's barking up a storm. <laughs> she's anticipating it, having to stop here. Because mama gets so much stuff. I've really curbed my spending now after my stuff that I got with my Christmas money. That was fun. <laughs> but yeah, funds are now low. So a lot less spending for Lisa, which is okay. I mean, I, like I said, I'm anticipating doing my entire coloring book haul or coloring book collection. And boy, I don't know how many parts that's going to be. I have, I don't know if I'm going to, I suppose I will eventually show all my coloring supplies. Probably break it up into my markers and then pencils and then maybe some miscellaneous supplies. Yes, there is that much. I am a collector, <laughs> and that's why I I really want to get my um, pencils back out because I have so many nice brands of pencils. One thing I want to do on camera, and I've only used these once, so it will be <laughs> a big test, is my Elbrick Dewar watercolor pencils. They're Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. And I only used them once. So I would like to maybe do something on camera with those. So that should be an interesting video. And also the Inktense pencils. I worked a number of times with the Inktense pencils, but it's been quite a while. So we can maybe do that together. And then the other thing is the Neo Color 2s. So I have a lot of watercolor things that I have not worked with. I've only worked with the Neo Color 2s a couple of times too. And let me tell you, those experiments did not turn out that well. So hopefully we'll be able to <laughs> do something with them. So I'm trying to think of what I can do for future videos. And it's like, gosh, what do you people find to talk about and, and show? Oh, went on the lines there. You know, I'm trying to rack my brain on what I can do for future videos. I know a lot of you do a lot of color and chats. And as you can tell, I kind of struggle with doing that because I'm just... Again, I'm just not used to, oh, I forgot one here. 
I'm just not used to talking and I really hope I get over that. I get nervous before I even start shooting this video. And I'm like, gosh, Lisa, just calm down. You're just talking to people out there. Not everybody has perfect videos. I wish I was as at ease as Anne from A Colorful Life is. She just cracks me up. Uh, let's maybe do this outline in. Should we do it in yellow? That goes quite a ways. Uh, let's do it in red. As you can tell, I did not have this planned out, which really shocks me because <laughs> normally I want to have everything planned out before I even turn on that camera or phone recorder, whatever. I did finally get a hold of something that will start and stop my videos, my recording. I had tried a number of these, and while they worked great for taking photos remotely and zooming in for photos, it would not zoom in for videos, which is what, of course, I want it for. So I can zoom in without having to try to zoom in on my screen, on my phone screen, or having to move the arm down with, uh, that's holding my phone. Because then sometimes I get out of frame like I am now. Let me turn this a little bit. So this is, where'd it go? Oh, I lost it. Hmm, where did I put it? It was in my lap. Did I lose it? Oh yeah, it fell on the floor. This is what it looks like. Just a teeny little thing but it actually works. You can switch the camera around, or uh, this is for a video or a picture. No, that is a video or picture. This is where you can swap it from front camera to the back camera. This is to zoom in, to zoom out, and to either take a picture if you're in picture mode or to start your video and to stop the video. And yes, it actually zooms in and out. And I have been looking and looking and looking for one of these that actually zooms in and out. It, of course, was a little pricier than those cheap ones that didn't work. But what good is a cheap device if it's not going to work? So yeah, I was just ecstatic when I got that. I think I got it yesterday. And I was so nervous opening it because I thought for sure it was going to be. I had specifically asked on Amazon before I bought it if it would zoom in while recording videos on a phone, on an iPhone. And the, probably not manufacturer, the seller of the item directly responded and said, yes, it will. Well, I was taking that with a grain of salt because I had also asked the same question when I ordered one of those cheap ones on AliExpress and I had contacted the seller on AliExpress and asked him the same question and he assured me, oh yes, it will zoom in on your videos. <coughs> well, needless to say, it didn't. So I was pretty bummed out about that. And so I was a little leery of spending the money on this one because like I said, it was quite a bit more money these nibs are kind of big, and I think that's why I'm having such a problem with these 
bleeding outside the lines. I'm trying to stay away from the lines so that as it feathers out. Mm. Um, so yeah, I was quite nervous opening the package yesterday. <laughs> and first off, I couldn't figure out how to get the darn battery in until I looked on the back side and it has a lock and unlock symbol. Of course, all the instructions were in Chinese. So that didn't help me much at all. But then I seen, finally, it says mode switch. And I finally figured out you have to unlock it and then this back case comes off and you can put the battery in. So, yeah. Ah, it took me a while to figure that out, but so then I got it. You have to, of course, use, this is um, from Momax, M-O-M-A-X, if anybody's interested in this. Where are you? There you are. Um, it's called Momax U Remote. So, of course, you have to use their app on your phone in order for it to work. You can't just use the standard camera app which is okay. I don't do anything fancy on the camera anyhow when I'm recording videos. So I installed the app and I very tentatively hit the button to switch it from, well, first of all, I, I took a picture remotely with that thing and it worked. It snapped the picture. So then I thought, okay, here we go. I switched it with the remote into video mode. And I was sitting in my living room and I hit the plus sign to zoom in while recording a video and it actually zoomed. I was just ecstatic. Let me tell you, that made me a happy camper because I am hoping as I get better at these videos and stay in frame, now when I want to zoom in and out, I don't have to... Oh boy, Lisa, you're doing a bad job. I can tell you I'm usually much better than this. Um, I won't have to touch my camera to zoom in and out anymore. And I should be able to not make you wiggle so much. Um, and uh, yeah, so now I'm going to zoom you back out. Doesn't that work neat? Zoom me back in. So it zooms in quite a ways. All the way to, wow. Yeah, I can get really close. <laughs> as close as I want to. <sighs> One thing I wish this did do, you have to keep hitting, you know, the, the minus. Where are you? The uh, minus in order to zoom back out. Rather than holding it down and letting it zoom out gradually or zoom in gradually. And yeah, so you got to keep clicking it. So in future videos, if you hear this little clicking sound, you know what it is. So I'll just keep this off, probably to my right, because I'm right-handed. And I think we're going to stop here today. Uh, this video is getting a little lengthy. And uh, from the first part and now this part, it's probably close to an hour long, if not more. So with having to quit that first part because I got that delivery and then having to restart this one, I am actually going to have to upload this to the computer, go into Movie Maker, and see if I can figure out how to splice these two parts together. Um, like I said, I have not worked with Movie Maker at all. From what I hear, it's not that hard. Um, so I'm sure I can figure it out. I have a computer programming degree, so <laughs> I am hoping I can uh, figure out something like that. So um, with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you're notified of any future videos. I hope everyone has a terrific day and as always, happy coloring.